In today's video we're looking at some tips and tricks that will help you in your first few hundred hours playing Rust. Whilst this is mainly focused at newer players, some of these may be relevant to some of you with more hours in the game. Be sure to comment any tips you feel that I've missed, or any that help you on a regular basis and you think might be helpful for others. Tip number one is choosing a server. When choosing your first server to play, you might want to aim form with less than 100 players, or maybe even less than 50 players. This way you can progress quicker and learn the mechanics of the game easier without getting killed too many times. Whilst you might think that playing on an official facepunch server would be the best option, these servers tend to be highly populated with much more experienced players, have no group size limit, and tend to have a slightly higher chance of you running into hackers. It's usually best to look for your community server or a modded server with active staff who will monitor the players and ban hackers, cheaters, or anyone abusing the group size limit giving you a more fair chance. If you are finding it's a little slow to progress, then you can try moving on to a 2x server instead for a slightly sped up Rust experience. I wouldn't recommend going any higher than a 3x server, otherwise it's not really Rust. You can check all of this information in the server's description in most cases just by clicking on the server in the server list. Tip number 2 is learn to PvP. Rather than trying to develop your PvP skills in-game using items you've worked hard to farm up, you can practice some PvP on training servers or sandbox servers. You can choose any specific weapon on many of these servers, or you might spawn with all of them, allowing you to practice whichever you want. Remember that Tier 1 weapons are easiest to get hold of in-game, while Tier 3 are the hardest. It's probably best to focus on the lower tier weapons to begin with, and you can move up as you progress. You can check the tier of the weapons from the crafting menu if you aren't sure, or with a quick google search. Personally, I'd recommend focusing on the bow, as you'll use this at the start of every wipe, and being good with the bow can get you a good head start. Once you feel comfortable with weapons, another tip would be just to use them. Don't leave them in a box because you're scared to lose them, because you may never get to use them. Plus, even if you do die and lose the weapon, it's good experience for PvP on a real server. Tip number three would be learn to build. Getting your first base down in the wipe can sometimes be a challenge, and dying whilst building your base can be really frustrating, often leading you to quit for the wipe. Before you start building, it's a great idea to ensure that you have everything crafted to build the base, such as your door, lock, and tool cupboard. I'd recommend spending some time on a creative or sandbox server to practice building a default starter base that you can use every wipe, ensuring that you can get it down quickly. The more times you build it, the quicker you'll be. Most people use a 1x2 base or a 2x2 base, but there's many tutorials for these on YouTube and other starter bases if you aren't sure. Tip number 4 would be choosing where to build. Choosing where to build is something every player faces at the start of every wipe. Regardless of how many hours you have, where you build your starter or main base can mean the difference between a really good wipe or a really bad one. You want to build close enough to trees so that you can farm wood, as well as close enough to a hilly area so there's nodes to farm for stone, metal and sulphur. You'll also want to build fairly close to a road and a red town so that you can get scrap and components. But be careful how close as these tend to be a hotspot for other players looking for PvP and loot. If you want to minimise the number of players you encounter, try setting in a snowy area as many players tend to avoid these. Just be sure to craft and wear enough clothes so that you don't freeze. As you gain more and more experience in the game, you can begin to build closer and closer to the populated areas. Tip number 5 would be don't over farm before you have a base. When you first join a server, especially if it's just wiped, you're going to be in the same boat as everyone else. You're either farming materials to build your first base whilst hiding from those trying to kill you, or trying to kill the players that are farming for their resources. Don't farm more than you need to, and don't farm where you spawn. Run straight to where you want to settle and build the base as soon as you have enough resources. Over farming is one of the main reasons that people die early and quit, because they keep losing all their hard earned materials and items. If you have a base, even if it's just a one by one, you can keep storing the loot every few minutes to minimise your losses. Tip number 6 is sleeping bags. One of the most annoying parts of Rust is not only dying, but having to wait a few minutes before you can respawn in your sleeping bag. To get around this, you can make a number of bags and place them in and around your base. By doing this, you won't have to face long bag timers each time you're killed. You can check out my other tips and tricks videos to see how close to each other the bags can be before they start to share a respawn timer. 
You also want to make use of this on a fresh wipe when running from your initial spawn point to where you decide to build. As you get enough cloth, craft bags and place them en route to where you build, creating waypoints. If you die, you can respawn at one of these bags, which is not only away from the populated spawn area, but it's also a little bit closer to where you want to build in the end. Tip number 7 is to look behind you. Whilst it may seem like a stupid one, it can come in handy a lot when you're running, farming or doing something else. If you press Alt, you can look freely without changing the direction you are running or looking. This means you can farm a node or tree in front of you whilst looking behind and to the side. You can also look around whilst running in a straight line, which is really helpful to see if someone is chasing you. Tip number 8. Farming Scrap If you're finding that farming scrap on the road isn't going too well for you because you keep dying to other players where you can't find any loot, then it's a great idea to try farming scrap on the ocean. Not as many people tend to farm scrap on the ocean, especially at the beginning of the wipe, so there's always potential for more loot and a lower chance of dying. You just need to learn how to utilise the boats in Rust and it's pretty easy from there. Whilst boats do have a low grade fuel cost to use, you can usually cover this with breaking red rails that you farm on the rafts that you find. This means that it's basically a zero cost to maintain your seafaring loot runs. If you find some diving gear whilst farming, you can use this as well to collect the underwater crates which are recognisable by a floating bottle on the surface of the water. These take a little bit more time to get, but tend to hold better components and resources. Tip number 9 is farming resources. If you're finding farming resources difficult because you can't find any, or again, you keep dying, then this will help out. Try travelling to a more quiet area of the map to farm. The main resources that you want are wood, metal, stone, sulphur, cloth and animal products, like fat, to make low grade. Wood you can more or less find anywhere on the map primarily in the green areas and more densely in the forest areas, which can be found in the brownish areas of the map. Wood, metal and stone you can find anywhere on the map again, however it spawns much more densely in the mountains on the map, which are usually white. Cloth, or hemp, is primarily found in the green areas of the map as well. Of course, there's other ways of obtaining it in the desert and mountains, such as with cactus or recycling, but it's a little bit more difficult. Animals can be found all over the map, however, they usually sought after, so it's best to go to a quiet area such as the corner of the map where most players wouldn't go and look there. Number 10 is the honourable mentions. If you light a campfire in your base and sit near it, your comfort will go up to 50% if there's only one of you. You can use this to tell if there's someone door camping you because your comfort will go over 50%. If you right click an item in the crafting queue, it skips it to the front of the queue so you don't have to wait for other items to craft first. If you middle mouse button and drag, this will split a stack in half. If you shift middle mouse button and drag, it will split one third of the stack. If you have more than 100 hours in Rust, or you have any other tips that might be useful, be sure to comment them below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.